Okay, this is problem 6-3. Um, first thing to do on this problem here is try to draw yourself a good free by diagram. Uh, make sure you understand exactly what the loads are in the beam. Um, we will go ahead and do that. So if I draw a free by diagram of the beam here, this will be A, B, and C. Okay, and um, we have some load here at B, and I'll draw that as two vectors. I'm going to break it into components. I'll have a force here and a force here coming this way. Um, I'll have a force coming down here this way. So at A, we should get something that goes like this. These are reaction forces. Make it a little straighter. Okay, and um, then we're going to have some type of moment. We'll see what this is. Like this. Something like that. So we'll call this F of AY. We call this F of AX. We'll call this F of BY and F of AX. All right, we have 1,200 pounds coming down. Okay, so first thing we're going to do here is we're going to take a moment around A. I sum my moment around A and set that equal to zero because the object's not spinning. Then we can say this. Anything that goes this way, we're going to let it to be negative. Anything that goes this way, we're going to let it to be positive. All right, so then we're going to have 1,200 let we'll make that negative times this distance. Then distance from here to here is going to be eight. All right, and then we could say plus F B Y times three must be zero. All right, so run that number right now. Um, Twelve. Okay, let's right quick. Clear. All right, 1,200 times 8 divided by 3 it means that the the y component of b is equal to 3,200 pounds, and that's going up. All right. The reason being, okay. Now the F B is that a B? Hang on, let me make that better B. The FBX cannot create a moment around that, so we're not considering that. Now, what's happening here, if we look this and regard this into um, what the actual force is in BY, then we can think of it in this term. If this vector goes up like this, and it has a uh, horizontal and vertical component, we'll draw these, these are the components of that vector, like this, and we know this is 3200. And we know the ratio between here and here is going to be a 4, 3, 5. And we'll let this be FB. Then I can say FB times 4 over 5, which is really the cosine of this angle, must equal to be 3,200. You can do it like that if you choose to. Then you can say FB. It's going to be equal to times 5 divided by 4. It's going to be 4,000. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm just doing it anyway. So, FB is going to equal to 4,000. Get the real of this real quick. Okay, and then if you want to find out um, the X component, then all you have to do is here. When we sum the forces in the X, then what I can say would be the 4,000 times 3 fifths I multiply this which is 4,000 and I'll make this the x multiply that by the 3, 000, 3 fifths 
You don't get the VAX component, so 4,000 times 3 divided by 5, 2,400. Okay, so when we sum these, then we can say FBX, which would be 2,400 to the right, plus FAX, minus equal to 0, and we find out very quickly that FAX would be 2,400 going to the left. Okay, and then when we sum the forces into the Y, then we'd get negative 1,200 coming down, plus the FBY. And when we did this, we, right here, we know it's 3,200. I could write 3200. Let me just change that. Plus FAY equals zero. And we'll find out very quickly that FY at A must equal to a 2000. here, and that must be going down. So even though we drew this going up, it actually goes down the opposite direction, which is fine. It really makes no difference at all. So let's, let's select what's important here. What we're doing is we're looking for this value here, and uh, we got this value here um, is 3200. And that's what's important here. Now we're going to draw our, our um, shear diagram. All right, so we'll sit here and do this. So what really we're just going to draw a straight line. And this line is going to represent a length of eight feet. All right, so we know at this end we have 1,200 coming down. And again, the sign convention isn't really important here. So what we're going to do, and they do this typically in engineering, is we're going to come back up because the beam is resisting that, and that's going to be 3,200. Sorry, 1,200. 12, I apologize. It'll be 1,200 here. And all that debt means is we have 1,200 coming down, so the beam has got to resist this as I move to the left, so I immediately go up 1,200 here. Now, it will stay that way. It will stay that way until I get to this point right here. So what you can say is I'm going to let this point right here represent B. And typically what I usually do, and I think most uh, teachers do that, they draw this over here. They'll just draw themselves a horizontal line from the top of this all the way over to I get to right here. Okay, now I go 1200 all the way over and I can put extra arrows in there if I want to. Makes no difference. I can put a bunch of those in there and say this will be 1200 all the way over to here. All the way over to here. Until I hit this point. At this point I got to go down 3200. So if I go down 3200, 3200 minus um, 1200 is going to give me 2000 coming down. So I come down here. And now this will continue all the way over until I hit FAY, and then it'll go back to zero. And so what we can do is like draw this back to here. And I draw myself a horizontal line like this. And again, you can draw some extra arrows in here. It makes no difference whatsoever. Like that, like that. And I'll cut this line back. Or add one more. Okay. So this is 1200 here, all the way along here. We come down 3200, so this becomes negative 2000. And that is your shear diagram. Okay, the moment diagram is pretty easy. Usually you just drop it down and look directly below. So 
So I'll just draw a line straight down to here. I'll draw a line straight down to here. Again, these are just guidelines. You don't necessarily have to do this. Okay. All right. So now all we do is you you can you look what's called critical points. You look where the shear diagram crosses the x-axis and it crosses right here. Do a different color. It crosses right here, and we know this distance between here and here is going to be the five feet. So what I'm going to recommend here is to take a moment around here. So if I do that, if I sum a moment. And that moment will be around the B value. Okay, then really what I'm going to do is if I sum that moment and I look to this, I've got 1,200 coming down. This length is 5. So 1,200 times 5 is going to be 6,000. So I'll write that down. 1,200 times 5. It's going to give me 6,000. All right. Again, the sign convention is not necessarily important. So when we come down here, then what I'll do is I'll immediately come straight down, and I'll make this dot represent the 6,000 here. So the way this is going to work, and I'll take these off because I've lined everything up, is I draw a line from here to this point. This would represent 6,000. And now, um, as I go back this way, if I want to take a moment around here, I have already said it has to be zero. So this immediately has to go back like that. And that's your moment diagram. Okay. So the value of this would be. If I want to find out what my maximum shear was in the beam or, or, or the maximum tension load due to the moment, if I was going to do the maximum tension load the moment, of the moment, I would f look here. I'd analyze the beam at this point here because that's where the moment diagram is the max. All right, shear diagram, I could find out what the shear force would be anywhere along here and along here. So if, if the beam is going to fail, it's going to fail somewhere along here because I got the shear of being 2,000, and that has that'll give me the largest uh, shear stress. All right, hope this helps.